welcome back. My name is Brittany Hales and this is Hales Consulting, a business dedicated to making sure that you have confidence in your career. In today's video, we are talking about LinkedIn. Yes, LinkedIn, the platform that you have no idea why you need it, but you know you need it. And as a previous recruiter, I can confirm this. I used to spend hours upon hours every single week sourcing candidates on LinkedIn. And even if I didn't reach out to candidates on LinkedIn, I was finding them on there. I would go to their contact info and email them from there. And even if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I have a LinkedIn profile, but no one's reaching out to me on there. People are looking. It's not always the platform where a recruiter is going to reach out to you. It may be a starting point for them to add you to the list and they'll go back and email you later. And even if you're an entrepreneur looking for clients, LinkedIn can be used for that too. Customers and clients and people who can invest in your business can find you on LinkedIn. Therefore, even though the platform is kind of confusing, <laughs> it's incredibly important to make sure that you show up as your best self and that your professional brand is clear and concise and laid out on your LinkedIn profile. So in today's video, I'm gonna be walking you through eight quick steps on things that you need to have a great LinkedIn profile. Before we even get started here, go ahead and click that subscribe button down below. Also, I post career tips, resume tips, interview tips every single day on Instagram, and they are not for me to look at, they're for you. So go ahead and follow Hills Consulting on Instagram as well, which you can also find in the description bar down below. All right, let's get started. So the first step to building a great LinkedIn profile is to define your professional brand. The idea of defining your professional brand has come up in at least half of my videos because it's so important. LinkedIn is basically creating a visual representation of who you are professionally. So there is absolutely no way that you can develop a great LinkedIn profile if you don't know who you want to portray professionally. It's impossible. So in order to really start creating a great LinkedIn profile, you have to define your professional brand. Think about who you're trying to attract to your profile. Are you seeking new opportunities? If that's so, then you want to make sure that your profile is very obviously stating that. You also really want to make sure that in addition to presenting your professional brand, you're letting people know what you should be contacted for. If you are interested in job opportunities, or if you are an entrepreneur seeking people to come to your page who are clients, those are two very different profiles. The person that's seeking job opportunities, you need to make it very clear what job opportunities that you are currently qualified for. And if you are someone seeking clients, you need to let clients clearly know the services that you provide. So this is what I mean by professional brand. Define exactly who you are, what you want to portray and what you want to be contacted for, because that is how you build a great profile. At least that's the first step to building a great profile. The second step to having a great profile is having a professional profile picture. And there are two types of LinkedIn profile photos. It's either a clear headshot with a very clear background or it's a lifestyle picture. You sitting at a conference or you sitting at a, on speaking on a panel. Something that shows you in action what you want to be known for. Now some big no-nos for a profile picture. First and foremost, absolutely no selfies. You can put your phone on a tripod and take a picture of yourself, have someone else take the photo for you, but what a selfie does, it doesn't give an angle that is necessarily the most professional angle. So please, no selfies. Another big no-no, please make sure that your shirt or whatever top you're wearing does not match the background because then you're blending in with the wall or whatever's behind you. That's not cool. Another big no-no, once you've graduated, please no graduation photos as your LinkedIn profile picture. Even if you are still in school, try and get someone to take a nice picture of you. Now that you have your photo, directly behind your photo is your cover. So the third step to creating a great profile is to update your LinkedIn cover. Your LinkedIn cover, also referred to as your LinkedIn banner, 
is that blue space right behind your profile photo. And a lot of people don't pay attention to it or don't even realize that it's a thing. But the thing is, when you go to a profile that has one, it automatically creates a sense of professionalism because you can tell that that person took an extra step to try to customize or even personalize their profile page for their brand. Now, I personally use Canva, which is a free graphic design tool online to create my cover, but I believe that LinkedIn also has a process where you can create one directly on the website. I would highly recommend you creating a custom one. And what I mean by custom, it can be a plain background of your favorite color. It can be a background that has your email attached to it or ways people can get in contact with you. If you are a business owner, you want to add things like your website or your social media pages or anything you know where customers or clients will be able to get in contact with you. Because as I said before, whenever a cover is present or a LinkedIn banner or whatever you want to call it, it just shows off a great sense of professionalism. It shows that a person took the extra step to make sure that their LinkedIn was complete. So the fourth step to building a great LinkedIn profile is creating a descriptive headline. Now, your LinkedIn profile is a very first set of descriptive words that people see about you besides your name itself. Now, there are three types of LinkedIn headlines. There is the simple headline, the list headline, and the I help headline. So the simple headline is just you simply stating what your current position is. So if you are currently a nurse or a rehabilitation nurse, that is a simple headline. You would just put just that rehabilitation nurse. You can put where you work at, but it's a very simple one-liner on exactly what it is that you do. If you're an entrepreneur, very simple headline would be that you are a career coach like myself or your career coach at a specific business, whatever it be, it's just a one-liner. Now a list headline is where you list out the many positions or many skill sets or many attributes that you have. So that list may include things like your position, plus the fact of your one of your hobbies is that you're a content creator. Are you an award winner? You're creating a list of all of the many things that people not only should recognize you for, but should get in contact with you for. Now, if you create a list headline, you definitely want to separate the list and don't want to have just words running after each other. So most of the time you can just separate it by a little line. I wouldn't recommend the comma because it doesn't necessarily look as aesthetically pleasing, but just separate each position or skill or attribute or quote by a line. Now, a I help headline is mostly suited, in my opinion, for entrepreneurs or people who have some sort of service or business or anything that they provide where they'd want people to reach out to them to solicit that business. So an example of this would be, I help people grow their business through digital marketing. That's the headline clean and simple because you're letting your clients or your customers know what it is that you can offer to them as a service and there's no guessing game as to why they should reach out to you. Now when it comes down to it, a simple headline versus a list headline versus a help headline, they're all great. It really comes down to at the end of the day, what is your professional brand and what is it that you want people to reach out to you for? Your headline follows you throughout LinkedIn. So when you comment somewhere, people see your headline. When you like a post, people see your headline. If your LinkedIn profile is on the right hand side of someone's screen, they see your headline. So keep that in mind. In my opinion, your profile photo and your headline are some of the most important parts of your LinkedIn profile because they follow you throughout the website versus other attributes like your experiences and things like that are very, very important. Don't get me wrong, but your headline is one of the only set of texts besides your name that follows you throughout LinkedIn. It's the first thing that they're going to see about you. It is your first impression. So take it very seriously. If you've won awards or you've received or you've been featured or you have published in a magazine or in an article, you want to write those things in your headline. So you can say things like Forbes 30 under 30 scholar or um, attended a rock nation brunch. I don't know. Just think about really great things that you've accomplished or been awarded because that's great too. It can be a great selling point and it can be a really great talking point for people who want to reach out to you. 
So the fifth step to creating a great LinkedIn profile is to update your summary statement. Now your summary statement, also known as your about statement, is the section right below your headline in your profile photo and your cover that gives you the opportunity to expound on even further who you are, what you represent, and what people should reach out to you for. Now, once someone clicks on your profile, the next thing that they're going to see after seeing all those things I just listed is your about or summary statement. So you wanna use this as an opportunity to say, I gave you all of this, now that you got excited by that, here's even more amazing things to know about me. Your summary statement or your about statement is just that. It's the opportunity for you to very briefly summarize your work experience. You wanna make sure that you're including things about how many years of experience you have and whatever skill or professional brand that it is that you're trying to present. You wanna be very clear about the skills that you have to offer. Take your summary as an opportunity to talk about very briefly what it is that you currently do, what it is that you have experience in doing, and what you primarily want to be known for, AKA what do you want people to reach out to you for. And a major thing to remember is do not write about yourself in the third person. This is your profile, so talk about it like it's you. Now, the sixth step to a great LinkedIn profile is adding a featured section. A lot of people don't add this section because they have no idea that it exists. That is the honest truth. And the featured section is actually can be found in the more section of your profile. Click on more, hit add featured section, and boom, it's there is providing you with the opportunity to highlight publications, highlight videos, highlight articles, basically allowing you with the opportunity to provide a visual representation of things that you have contributed or that you have put out into the world. So for instance, if you constantly write articles for magazines or publications, add that to your featured section. If you're a YouTube content creator, add your videos to your featured section. Whatever you wrote in your headline, you want to use your featured section to back it up. So in my featured section, I have my website listed where people can learn more about my career coaching services. These are the kind of things that you want to provide. You want to provide proof that whatever's in your headline, you have evidence that you put things out into the world that exemplify those positions or those skills or those attributes or those awards. Even if you don't have publications or videos or digital things that you can put in your featured section, I would highly recommend you creating a personal website really fast and easy and free on websites like Wix or Squarespace and feature that so it gives people another opportunity to know more about you as well. Now the seventh tip to creating a great LinkedIn profile is to update your contact information. Now for your contact info, you can update it through your settings or you can go on your actual profile, click on contact info and you can update it from there. But you wanna make sure that all the information in there is up to date. So your email is up to date. Your phone number is up to date. Or if you don't even want your phone number on there, you can also remove it. Your birthday's on there if you want that to be there. If you don't, you can remove that as well. But I would highly recommend that you have your email. And also in your contact section is your LinkedIn URL. You can customize your URL to just be your first and last name or first, middle, and last, whatever you want it to be. But you want it to be something very clear that makes sense. That's not like Dorito Chips 212 because that makes absolutely no sense. So make sure that you're also updating your URL so that it's just your first and last name or your first, middle, and last. Make sure that your contact info is completely up to date because now that you've created the LinkedIn profile, you want people to actually use it and reach out to you. And the only way for them to really do that is if you have the most up-to-date information. So make sure it's updated so that you can get contacted and get a new job or get some new clients or have some investors. So the eighth and final step for your LinkedIn profile is to create detailed work experience descriptions. Focus on having your job descriptions describe exactly what you did in one sentence, but make that sentence incredibly impactful. You want to measure your impact. So if you are a project manager, you want to talk about the main ways in which you drove results. 
Did you increase productivity? Did you decrease latency? Those are the kind of descriptive job descriptions that recruiters, that investors, that clients want to see. They want to see what were the results. There is absolutely no need to describe or detail micro tasks on your LinkedIn profile. It's not necessary and it's going to drive you crazy to have to detail every single little thing that you did. And to be honest, that is not what people are looking for on your LinkedIn. They want to know how did you drive results? What is it that you did? There's a huge difference between saying that you worked on a project and you created and developed the database that people use for the project versus saying that you led the creation of the database for your teammates to use in order to finish the project. Huge difference between being a contributor and a leader. Another thing that you want to pay attention to in your job descriptions is there's an opportunity for you to add attachments or links. Add as many as you can. If you created something at a company that was externally shared or lives publicly on a public platform, provide a link to that attached to your job description. That is incredibly important because as I said, LinkedIn is a visual representation of your professional brand. So anything that you have that's digital or digital or lives online publicly, add it as an attachment to that description. And the same thing goes for when you're describing your education or your skills or the other section on LinkedIn profiles. It is not about taking 10 bullets to talk about every single little thing that you did. It's about taking two bullets or maybe even one and thinking about quality versus quantity. We want to know what did you do? How did you drive impact and what were the results? As a career coach, I know that defining your professional brand and showing up as your professional brand can be incredibly difficult. So I want to help you. You can go ahead and learn more about how to book time with me one-on-one -on -one by emailing me as at info at halesconsulting.com or you can look down in the description box below to learn more about how to book a career consultation with me. I've also included my LinkedIn profile down below and I update my LinkedIn almost every day, if not every day, then every other day. Do not forget to connect with me because I want to get to know all of you. Thank you all again so much for watching. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel. Just do it right now, actually. Okay. <laughs> also, don't forget to like this video, share it with everyone or anyone who you think would benefit from it. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye.